Uh, yes, the recording's in progress. And uh, I think we're going almost ready. Are, are we going out? Oh, yeah, we're live on Facebook already. All righty. Hello there, everybody. This is Alex, and this is our our program that we do on uh, on Mondays, which is uh, uh, just a bunch of nice people to get together. And we're, we put it out on Facebook because it's easier to put it out on Facebook than for me to adjust some things on YouTube to make it work. Uh, and uh, we have a whole bunch of people, as usual, waiting to go on with us. Uh, let me let me get this down here. Oops, no, that's too much. Hold on a second, folks. I don't know what I'm doing. Here, down we go. What? No, I want to get rid of. I want to get rid of something here. Hold on. Oh, I know what I got to do. There we go. There we go. That puts it down there. Okay. Got to just adjust everything. This is a cut and paste program. This is different than all the others we do. I don't have all the fancy graphics and the wipes and the ding, 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 ding. And it's fun to do that way because it doesn't put any pressure on me. Anyway, let me admit everybody that's here right now. And we're not going to be joined probably by Shecky today because Shecky, uh, as you know, had his eye done last week. And so this week, he had to go back on Monday and they made an appointment for him at 2.30 to have the doctor look at the eye and make sure it was all okay. And it takes a lot to get back from the city. And he said that that particular doctor waits forever. And, uh, uh, you know, so he's not, probably not going to be here today or if he's here, he's going to be later than usual. Hello there to Marjorie Miller. That's my, hey. that's my bride now of 11 years, right? I think so. We, we had to sit around <laughs> figuring it out. I'm not sure. It's only been 11 years. 11 years? Oh, then, my God. And starting next week, she she still has a job, but only a quarter of a job. And so she's going to job. Home. I have a job four more days. She's going to be home Actually, every day. day. Every <laughs> day she's going to be here. <laughs> Uh, so uh, uh, we're taking bets here. You're going to get in on the pool if you want to. Um, when I blow my brains out. <laughs> okay. I've got, uh, I've got Wednesday at noon. Okay. That's Len LaFrisco who's betting on my death at Wednesday at noon. We got Mike Chisholm with us up there in Canada. Hello, Mike. Uh, hey man. Yeah. You know what? You're Jewish. You got a lot of resilience in you. I'm going to give you three full weeks. Put me in a square for uh, three weeks Monday. <laughs> Okay, good, good. Uh, Steve Bender, any bets? No. <laughs> no. Okay. Thank you, now, Steve. How, how about Mandy? Hello, Mandy. Hi. Hi. How about bets on when she kills you? Yeah. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. I think you're about two hours. Yeah. <laughs> Vernon Nunn, any any uh, any possibilities of what you when you think I'm gonna kill myself for her being home all the time? Nah, just put it on YouTube. Just put it on YouTube, right? And uh, let's see here, Charlie, how you doing? You got any bets at all? Nah. I give you four days. I'm four days, and and Edward Berger. I think you'll last a long time. <laughs> you know something? The only thing funnier than your voice is that. Goddamn hat you're wearing. Oh, what is that? That's uh, what's uh, this is uh, damage of property of Disneyland. Yeah. Oh. Wait a minute, you stole it? I don't wear. Disney? I don't wear this too often. Did you steal it from Disney? No, Disney no, no. Disneyland. It's, it's, it's they sell it. <laughs> they sell it, but it says property of. Yeah, it says property. Oh well, it shouldn't because then it would be well. I know. Yeah, whatever. So, why? Why don't people call it that, Disneyland? <laughs> I've, I've never heard anybody say from here on uh, out it's going to be Disneyland. You want to go to Disneyland, Marjorie, on our next Disneyland, vacation? I don't think so. <laughs> How does a family of four go there and afford for, to be there? Yeah, I don't know how they do it. What it, what is the cost now of going to Di well Disney World is where I would take a kid or something. One one day into the park is in the 120, 140 range now. Yeah. Eight, eight, we got it booked. Yeah. We're we're going there at the end of April. We're gonna be there for May the fourth in California. Uh myself, my wife, and then our adult son and his wife. Um, seven hundred dollars US for four days. 
Yeah. Per person? No, that's not No, bad. that's that's per couple. Sorry, per couple. Per, per couple. couple. 700 per couple. That's For four lot. days. 2006, that took my family, my yeah. girlfriend, and three kids. It was $6,000. No. Yeah. Where did you go? Yeah. Disney we World? We stayed in the Disney Resort, and that's why wow. I thought so much. Okay, but so you were seven days. Seven days. Charlie, what year? 2006. Wow. Um, and that was Disney World. Disney World. Right? Yeah. I mean, if, you, yeah. if you if you paid me six thousand dollars, I would not go. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're right. I would that not. Was a great turn, vacation. I would turn down six thousand dollars to have to I endure. Gotta I got to tell you something, Steve. You know me. I'm Mister. You know, cynic about everything. What? I went to Disney. Yeah. Uh, I went. Don't, don't go over to the dark side, Alex. Come on. <laughs> I went to Disney World and I was kind of awed by it. You know, they took this swamp and they built all that out of this swamp and they put up all these hotels. And the, I mean, what he bought at that time was considered, you know, he bought it cheap because it was land nobody wanted. And, and I found it aw, 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 awesome to me that, that this thing existed, you know. Yeah, I mean, you know, I bet the Nuremberg rallies in the architecture was very impressive as well. Uh, please, let's all note that Steve Bender has likened Disney World to the Nuremberg rallies. <laughs> Epcot Center alone was worth it. I tell you, it was great. Well, Epcot, I liked a lot. I also, what else did I like? Uh, I kind of liked the, the MGM studio thing. It, it, yeah, it, that MGM was good. Studios, which I wonder if it's still Disney MGM or now it's Disney Pixar or Disney 20th or whatever else the properties are that Disney bought because they don't own MGM. You know, so I wonder if that's changed. I'll have to look it up and see. But, you know, eventually Epcot was supposed to be a city. It was a, a, a uh, yeah, it was called, it stands for Experimental Prototype of the City of the Future, or City something. Of tomorrow, yeah. Of tomorrow. Yeah. And what he was going to do is he was literally going to build a community there, and he was going to have people live there. So, you know, but you, in a way, because you're part of a tour, I guess, you're also a prop. So they should pay you to live in Epcot, right? <laughs> there you go, Steve. You know, oh, they should call you like they do all the people at Disney World, cast members. Oh, you know. <laughs> but what they did is instead of do that, because obviously Walt died very shortly after the opening of, of, of Disney World. He may have even died before it. I don't, I don't remember exactly. But um, he uh, he would die, uh, die, when he died, they didn't want to do the Epcot thing. So Epcot became kind of like a, a pavilion of the world. OK, and he did build they did did build the, the the city and the city was called Jubilee. It's still there. And supposedly all of it was built to be very modern, all the wires underground, every house had access to the internet, blah, 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 blah. And uh, people started suing Disney. They didn't like it. They were just too Nazi-like in their fervor to have you be part of this, this jubilee thing, you know, and that you couldn't do this on your lawn and you couldn't do that on your roof. And Finally, they, they started suing him. And I don't know whatever happened to Jubilee. It's still there, but I don't know if it's called that. It's all, all I know is, oh, it's all, all I know is I get to step foot on the Millennium Falcon. That's all I know. It, it, I'm going to cry like a little baby. I'm so excited. It's all tied to some sort of weird moral indoctrination. And it has been since I was a kid. That just makes me crazy. Disney. Yeah, the, the Disney product and ethos. Yeah. Well, look. give me a Daffy Duck cartoon any day over <laughs> anything Disney's ever done. Well, I don't know. Hey, how, man, I what? prefer Looney Tunes to Disney as well. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah without yeah. doubt. Well, Lo D Looney uh, Disney always taught you his moral precepts. Right. Right. Whereas Looney Tunes taught you how to be an anarchist. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I know what side I'm on there, man. There's nobody more anarchistic in cartoonery or in animated cartoons. Than Bugs Bunny, 
Also, no other creative ways to use an anvil either. <laughs> <laughs> or an Acme rocket. <laughs> Andy, who was your what was your favorite cartoons? Did you like Disney or did you like Looney Tunes better? Oh, Merry Melodies, Looney Tunes, yeah. all that. Okay, then you're a, I think probably this is a to me, this is a Warner Brothers Looney Tunes group. This is a Looney Tunes group, no question about it. <laughs> yeah, because that's the kind of thing that will have you watched any of the recent ones? I stumbled upon them on you know HBO Max. They're really good. What the new ones? Yeah, I was kind of shocked. Yeah, I watched some of them. They weren't bad. They yeah, yeah. weren't bad. Yeah. I was very surprised. Yeah, I'll tell you what came closest to redoing them were when they did the uh, the uh, Animaniacs. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. They were awesome. Animaniacs yeah. and Tiny Toons were both awesome. Yeah. My what? Goodness. What? What did you say, uh, Mandy? I said my kids like the Animaniacs. That's but they used to watch. So yeah. I've let them watch old ones too they liked um and they like tom and jerry i know my younger daughter liked tom and jerry like i did i know that's not looney tunes but i, I like tom and jerry, jerry. I, I, jerry. yeah I, I don't know i never liked tom and jerry and i can't tell you why exactly i mean it's you know i think it's kind of like I, I don't love roadrunner because you know you've i mean you've seen one you've seen them all no, well, and i think that's true tom and jerry roadrunner was very inventive and you never knew which way the train right. was coming from <laughs> you know or the train would come and you go, and then another train would come in another direction and wipe the road, the coyote out. But I, uh, I think the thing that bothered me most about uh, 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 Warner Brothers, oh no, about uh, Tom and Jerry, that was it. That's where yeah, I'm, MGM I'm, is I've always, I'm a big cat person. And I just got sick and tired of the cat being the evil one in the yeah. scenario. Do you, like, yeah. do you like Sylvester? Oh, I, I, I love, love Sylvester. Sylvester. Sweetie, oh my, I love them. Sylvester's the evil yeah. one. <laughs> Sylvester's the evil one, but he's also endowed with a certain amount of stupidity. Yeah. It makes well, him the victim. He's a victim of his own stupidity. <laughs> uh, speaking of which, did uh, anybody watch the Academy Awards last <laughs> night? Oh, my God. Yeah. My God. Oh my, oh, my, what are you talking about? my favorite is the literal dance of death during the in memoriam to Norman Greenbaum. <laughs> Isn't yeah. that Spirit really... in the sky. Yeah. That's that terrible? <laughs> no, well, you, you know what? They did the in memoriam and they had everybody's names up there, but they were too busy showing the choir, not the names. And you right. had to kind of squint and go, who was that? Was that, was that uh, Betty White there? <laughs> you know, and, uh, and they left out Cloris Leachman. Really? And they left out Monica Vitti. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. Wow. Well, I can see them leaving out Monica Vitti because the, the, the memory of her in the, with the general public is perhaps faded. But yeah, you're, yeah, when you're the, talking about, she's you're, a big deal in film history. Yeah, but when you're talking about Cloris Leach, she yeah. should have been there. Of course. You know. God. And some of those people that they had up there were like talent agents and stuff. It's like, really? <laughs> okay, come on. It, yeah, it was. It was. I thought um, it should be the end of that show. Well, I would hope. well they should have had the Oscar in the in memoriam. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, but, uh, uh, but obviously, you know, the Chris Rock thing is. Just, oh well, well, we'll get to that in a second. <laughs> what was, I'll tell you what was wrong with it. Everybody, they gave this again to a bunch of people who had never done this before and probably also didn't make many movies or anything either. Uh, these were some, some hip hop producers. I think yeah. it was. That's why we had an overabundance of, of uh, Negro spirituals. Uh, yeah. No, why we had an overabundance of, uh, of, of rap and hip hop and so on. I, I you know, uh, Charlie being the only person not bleaching out their picture. Um, <laughs> a a non-bleacher, okay? That would be a nice way of putting it, right? Yeah. It, it, don't you feel that there are more people who have to be represented than just Black people? <laughs> yeah. I mean, what about the Mexicans? What about the Indians? What about the Asians? 
Yeah. And we don't we didn't see much of that kind of representation there. Oh, sure, the South Koreans, but the South Koreans, like here in New York, we have a marathon every year, and the winner of the marathon every year is what from Kenya. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, the winner every year is going to suddenly be people from South and uh, South Korea. It's just you know it's a new given. But that was, you know, I just never got the sense of uh, inclusiveness in this show last night. I saw that it was, let's see how many black faces we can put on the screen, then we'll say it's inclusive. And I I hate when that happens because that's, what's the word I'm looking for? Shoehorn? Huh? Shoehorn? No, it wasn't shoehorn. Patronizing? Yeah, I don't believe in the sincerity of the uh, inclusiveness, okay? It's a knee-jerk response to the Oscars so white, you know, a couple of years ago, right? So they go in the opposite direction. Well, it was a largely white industry at one point, you know, certainly run by whites, and the parts for blacks were only as uh, maids and, uh, you know, servants. That was for years when the, when the whites ruled Hollywood. But as years have gone on, the whites don't rule Hollywood as much as they used to. There are a lot of very successful uh, uh, black uh, entrepreneurs in the movie business, in the music business, and so on, that just by natural means, that change has kind, would have kind of taken place anyway. And you didn't have to say, oh, we've got to make sure that we have... Uh, a black this and a, a, a you know a white that because that that's then am I right Charlie where am I wrong here no I'm, I think they're still feeling guilty about way back when Patty McDaniel won that Oscar that they made her sit <laughs> off at a table all by herself yeah. on the side well, that was terrible it was terrible yeah, right? wow it was terrible and you know I got to tell you who is he who is the second black to win an Academy Award Sidney Poitier Sidney Poitier yeah. No, yeah. no, nobody, rem- one nobody remembers. His name was Charles Basket. Um, Anybody know who Charles Basket is? What was I, the movie? If I told you Uncle Remus, would you know Uncle Basket? Oh, okay. yeah. no, no yeah. shit. Oh, uh, oh and, the Song of the South. Okay. Yeah, and he got an honorary Academy Award that year. Wow. For Song of the South. So, you know, I mean, they were trying to do something there, you know. That they hadn't done before, but then of course Sidney Poitier became the first. But now we've had a lot of black winners, and you know, I mean, the whole like, thing, yeah. the whole thing's gotten so far removed from the art of anything. movies to have anything to do. With, I mean, this is they left out all those awards that they did beforehand, but the show's still three and a half hours of total bullshit. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. five hours. I, I thought about that. You know, they, what they did is they three and a half hours. They, they, I get to you in a second, Vernon. They took up these people who got these subsidiary awards, as they think of them as okay, right. you know, best costume designer or something. Editing, like, editing, editing. 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 <laughs> okay, that's, that's editing, and they they put that. Um, in these, they, what they did is they gave them out during the first hour that they were all in the room. Yeah. Okay. And then they videotaped them and then they played them back throughout the show, but very fast, yep. edited down and so on. Right. That was right. meant to speed up the show. Last yeah, night's show was, I think, one of the longest in history. Yeah, they gave us. And 40 minutes. <laughs> we were joking that the director was probably sitting back there with a bottle of bourbon going, that's it. I give up. <laughs> no, either that or going back there and going, oh, who needs the clock? Just keep going. It's a great show. It's a great okay, show. Come on, let's the only let's thing that could make this thing better if somebody hit somebody. <laughs> <laughs> and okay, then somebody did. What did you do think it. of the host? What was Vernon going to say? I, you know, in my opinion, you could have gotten rid of two of them and kept Amy Schumer. She happened to be pretty good last night, and I'm not a big fan. I, I didn't you think they added all that much, to be honest. I, I, I it was, it, well, they never do because right. very few, very few uh, producers and hosts fe- know that the the bottom line is here. Nobody's there for the host. Right. They're the star of the show or the Oscars. So just give them away and let's get out of here. 
Yeah. They could well, have done that cool. show in two hours last night if they wanted huh. to. Or it should be Ricky Gervais every time. Uh-huh. <laughs> Yeah, I think I would I would submit there was a time where people looked forward to the Oscars with the host. Billy Crystal is the one that comes yeah. to mind. Johnny Carson had a few as well. Yeah. For me personally, when Dave did it, I watched the Oscars for the for, for, for the host that year. But it's been a long time. I'm trying to think of the last one who who maybe elicited that kind of a, a sentimental response. Yeah, uh, I think Martin and Baldwin, well, maybe. Well, you got to remember that the guy who used to almost do it every year was Bob Hope. Bob Hope. Oh, he was the best. Okay. Then he was the best. Great. Yeah, fantastic. And he, he knew exactly that, that he wasn't the star of the show. Right. That the show he was, was giving away the Oscars. Yep. He was in the in the movie business. A lot of these hosts aren't even in the movie business. These yeah. Days. No, I mean, most of them are in television now. Right. You know, the one, they had Jimmy Kimmel one year, and they yeah. had, uh, who was the other one? Oh, uh, uh, Ellen DeGeneres yeah. hosted the Oscars. That's right. That's right. Okay. And who, why? You know? Um, I mean, I understand that the form of distribution is changing and going to something you watch on your screen at home. But Netflix is not TV, you know. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it, it, it wasn't this supposed to be an award last night, the Audience Award or something? I thought so. I thought so, and then I didn't see them give it out. Yeah, you're right. Because I figured, I read, I fi- I I figured that, that was the thing Jackass could win. I read <laughs> something they were doing. They were doing something with votes from Twitter, right? And supposedly you know, the Zack Snyder fans, like, overtook it. and. It, you know, the results were just so lopsided because of his fan base. I mean, that's why I read something about oh, that. Oh, Justice League. Know. That's what those things yeah. were with the one, two, two, five, four, three, two, one. Yeah, it was all the Justice League stuff. Yeah. Oh, oh God. Yeah. I don't, I, I don't know about the thing about the host should be in the uh, in the movie business. I think it's the best MC. Like Carson, for example, wasn't in the movie business, but his Academy Awards were really good. At least mm. I remember them when I was a kid. He, he, you know, he was far more associated though with General Hollywood than sure. any of these people were to not last yeah. night. You know, because he had these people all on his show, and he lived in the community, and you know, he sure. participated in the community. Yeah, I mean, you, you, you want somebody with some wit who doesn't get in the way, and just you know, yeah. And, now, let's go to the next level here <laughs> to, to the situation between Will Smith. And Chris oh, Rock, God. in which Will Smith pimp slapped uh, Chris Rock for what, it, and it wasn't it, okay. Excuse me for the term Marjorie. Excuse me for the term Mandy, but uh, I would say the Pussy Whipped Award of the Year should go to Will Smith. <laughs> <laughs> because he was, when la- he, he was laughing at he was song. laughing he was, he was laughing, laughing at beginning. rock's joke when the, camera, when the camera wasn't on him he looked over and saw his wife who was glaring at him for laughing at it yeah so now he had to make up for it and decided he would be macho and went up there and slapped chris rock um never appropriate yeah, no, it's a total dick move. I mean, you know, if he really feels that way, take your wife's hand and walk out, and you make a much more powerful statement, or in your speech, say, "I found that joke hurtful," and you know, do something. Well, but, he, it was a dick move, but but that dick that move was a joke. It was a dick move of a joke. No, but yeah. that, that dick move was as the result of the staging of the Oscars. Mm. Because mm. when did they ever sit in the front row at tables? Right. And the yeah. table that all you had to do to get on the stage was walk up one step. Mm-hmm. And you were on the stage. Yeah. So yeah. he's sitting there about as far as uh, I am from you almost or across <laughs> the room here. And I go, hey, he just insulted my wife. And he could you could literally get up because you had that comfy chair you were in. You had right. a row of people. You'd have to go, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, excuse <laughs> me. Uh, and then have to walk up 20 stairs to the stage in order to slap the guy. You'd just be sitting there in the front row, maybe yelling at him, don't talk the fuck about my wife. Right. You know? It's definitely true, but where was security? Yeah, anybody could get up and do that. Well, you Did they not learn it. anything from Kanye? 
Yes. <laughs> yes. Exactly. So should he get to should he get to keep his award? No. He shouldn't have been able to get yes. on the stage for um, his award. A, a no. Okay. I'd Anybody say no, and award? I'll tell you why. I think he's he award. He took the moment away from a lot of other people who are yes, also getting did. awards, and all yes. the concentration and all the energy was flowing into him. And I think he ruined it, for instance, for uh, what's his name for the Harlem film. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, hair, the, hearing impaired, the hearing impaired community must be pretty pissed off at Will Smith. Yeah. yeah. They should be. They should, yeah. you know, just, it's all anyone's talking about. Yeah. Well, there is. If you go to YouTube, there are unedited versions of that. Yeah. Whole thing. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Should he, should he be disinvited from next year's show? I think he should be thrown out of the Academy if he's a member of it. Do you think they're going to do anything? And, and, and the news just came through that the Academy has uh, ostracized him for having done what he did last night and says they're going to have a hearing into it. Oh, yeah. really? But, okay. they, but they shouldn't have let him on, on the stage. They should have They had... should have thrown him out and allowed her yeah. to go up and accept the award exactly. for him. Absolutely. Wow. Yes. And then he's dancing yes. to get jiggy with it at the after party. Right. It's, it's yeah. unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, it, 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 that's what they should have done. They should have said, you're out of here. You, you People don't. If I did it, let's say I'm sitting there for whatever reason. I'm nobody, but I'm just I'm a seat filler. OK, right. <laughs> Ooh, by the way, a seat filler got in trouble because she started taking selfies. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's One of which was somebody who won an Oscar and says, here, hold it. I'll take a picture of you with the Oscar. <laughs> so she did it and they threw her out as a seat filler. <laughs> um, Boy, I'll tell you the one thing about the Oscars, no matter how good or bad they are, the next day there's just endless amounts of things to talk about. Yep. You know, but anyway, uh, uh, I, but I'd be a seat filler and I went up and I slapped Chris Rock and started yelling obscenities at him on TV. Be in jail immediately. I, I'd be in jail immediately. I'd be, I'd be kicked out the front door <clears throat> and I don't, you know, and later on, if he wins, the, if he won the Academy Award, uh, Jada could get up and say, I'm, I'm yep. accepting it in his behalf and rob him of that moment. Right. Yes. You know, and then still the hearing that Len was just talking about, that's still going to happen. But yeah, he should have been ejected from the building. That's the right move. That's exactly I mean, right. Technically, that was assault, what he did. Right. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I thought I thought Rock handled it very very gracefully. Okay, not me. Hold on, I got I got three things to say about this. Number one, Will Smith. I mean, the dude played Ali, and even when he was the Fresh Prince, he thought it could beat Mike Tyson. Let's get a fist, man. Let's see that happen. That's number one. <laughs> number two, um, Chris Rock, one of the wittiest, arguably the wittiest humans on the planet, on his feet should have been able to come back with a couple of punches yeah. right back at him i thought i he thought just that was got okay. punched in the face by surprise he slapped he was yeah. slapped he, he was, was slapped he was and and he started it right wow will smith just slapped the shit out of me or something he said that yeah. but i just i just i would have thought more for his wit and his humor that there would have been something funnier uh, i'll come out i think he was in shock really yeah, yeah. Well, that's oh, his he he was, yeah. but it's the ultimate heckle. And I thought he should have been ready for that. Now, wait a minute. There's somebody here named Pammy E who wants in. So let me let them in. And if I find that they're a, uh, uh, somebody who's giving us a bad time, you know. <laughs> oh. no, that's, birthday that's, pooch is here. That's Hi, not going to be a good one. Well, well, let's see. Let's on the camera. Birthday pooch. Uh, Pammy, are you there? I am. I'm here. Oh, are you on? Well, you're. We can't see you. I was just going to listen, but I, I don't know if there's a way to just do that. I can't I'll see you, Pammy. Your camera is, uh, put, your cam put your face in the camera. <laughs> I'm trying to. There I'm hey, You got to move the camera. Where are you calling from, Pammy? I'm in Sacramento. I'm a huge fan of yours. Oh, for, okay. Forever oh, and a day. I was a morning obit person that would listen in San Francisco. Yeah. Listen, just just uh, move your face move more the into the picture down. if you can. If you move I'm trying, camera. you guys. Sorry, it's cracked. <laughs> it must be the heaviest camera ever. It's an iPad. It, oh, it's an iPad. I see. Well, Marjorie's yeah. on an iPad, too. Yes. In fact, turn your yeah. iPad sideways. Well, and I bet we'll get a better back. picture on you. Better? No? Oh, yeah. Right. Did you move your, your iPad sideways? I'm, tr I'm trying to, you guys. Wait a second. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't even have makeup on 
Just just imagine. <laughs> let me let me find a filter for this. Okay. We don't care. <laughs> <laughs> we don't care. Yeah. Anyway, um, uh, uh, but uh, I just uh, you know. Is that your dog? That's why I was just going to be listening, but I'll 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 mute myself here. No, don't don't worry about it. Don't worry about. It. I guess I. That's my dog, I, Will Smith. Oh, I. <laughs> <laughs> well done. No, what I'm thinking is, is that the dog is sees its picture, and so it's deciding to do a voiceover. You know? There you go. Yeah, um, but you know, I mean, the question. I guess the question is. Do we really need the Oscars anymore? No. I mean, because yeah. the wonderful thing was that of all the the award ceremonies that took place every year, that was the one that had a little something going for it. A little right. class, class. It was a tux. We all felt we were wearing tuxedos when we watched it. And there was yeah. an orchestra, which was great. Yeah. yeah. Now we had a DJ. Yeah. The first <laughs> hour. The second hour, we had a combo. Yeah. Right. And the fourth, the third hour, they said now going to the third hour, and we were 20 minutes past the third yeah. hour beginning. For the last hour, we'll have our orchestra. I guess that's so at the end they could play that's entertainment with a full orchestra, you know. Yeah. I went, you know, this is ridiculous. Just it, it there's a certain classiness that that show had. You know? And obviously this comes from an aged perspective of mine. <laughs> the only the only way I think it could be saved is you make a call to some Martin Scorsese or son, you say, get your production company and give us an hour and a half to two hour show that honors film and gives out these awards and just yeah. come on and let people nothing see. else. Nothing yeah. else. Just something semi-professional that has some respect and bring elevates film rather than to get denigrates it like this. There, there's no excuse. There's no excuse for the fact. Oh, yeah, Vernon. I'm sorry. I, I, I forgot to go to you. Go, go ahead, Vernon. <laughs> Vernon. My wife brought up last night the same thing that she's brought up for the last several Oscars, and that is how can someone win Best Director and the film that they directed does not win Best Picture? Or, yeah. or uh, conversely, if something is made Best Picture, well, why isn't that director the best director? And why right. isn't the writer the best writer? And they almost always divide them. It's yeah. crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. Now that maybe they're, I don't know. I have no idea how that happens. If you're uh, the best director, you made the best film. Absolutely. I agree with Vernon totally. Well, I, I don't think they should be separate from each other. Right. How can they be? Yeah. But who gets, who gets the Oscar for the best picture? Producer. The, producer. the producers. Yeah. yeah. It's a, what they should say is best produced. Not best picture, no. best produced. That's produced, marketed, and sold to the public. <laughs> yes, right. Now, how, many, how, many, how many of you here saw the winner from last night's Oscars? The winner of what? Of the picture. How many here have seen best Coda? Picture, yeah. 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 Well, you woke me up to watch it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, we watched Coda the other day. You and I together. You stayed awake through the whole thing. Very good yeah. film. Very nice. I film. Meant during the Oscars. Oh no, it's a very nice film. Uh, you know, it, it certainly deserved it's to sweet. win. But it tugs at all the heartstrings. Then again, most of those other films were also pretty good. You know, uh, Mark, what did you think? Did you see the show last night? Hell no, I was asleep. Oh come <laughs> on. <laughs> I haven't watched the Oscars in like 20 years. There's a good it's reason. I'm going to give you one good reason to watch the Oscars. Why? Because you can bitch the next day. <laughs> oh, please. I don't need, I don't, the way things are in the world right now, um, you know, no. <laughs> so, wait, hold on a second. Did you see what Pammy just wrote? <laughs> yeah, I love Will Smith joke. hit him so hard he had fresh prints. <laughs> that's about the, Alex, that's about the only funny thing is the memes that are coming out of this. Oh, really? yeah. <laughs> I think the funniest part of the show is when they came back to Amy Schumer and she says, "Did something else happen while I was gone?" <laughs> yeah, it's a whole different Amy. vibe in the room. <laughs> yeah. They were saying they're going to have Mike Tyson the host next year. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> well, you know, I mean, I uh, it, it was it was an amazing evening and and uh 
One oh. which uh, Mark Thorner will not soon forget. Um, <laughs> you know, I mean, I like it because it does give me bitching rights the next day. I And I think every, I can remember almost every Oscar since I've been on radio. And the next day I always did a half hour on how bad they were. Mm. You know, the only really good Oscars, if you go back and you go to YouTube and you watch like a Bob Hope, the first one they ever did on TV, which was, I think, in the early 50s. If you look at that one, it was very it was done for radio, too. So he was reading from a script while he was doing it, like it'd be on radio. It's like in a hotel, right? It's like, you know, it's like a hotel curtain behind I'm, him. I'm trying to remember where is that they... the one, Alex, where he started Welcome to the, or as they call it, My House Passover. Is that the one? <laughs> My House Passover. Yeah, yeah, well, that, yeah. That's, yeah. that's great. Yeah. yeah. But he, but he, he uh, that, that I watched the first one and the first one, I think they got out of the way in two hours. You know, it just it, come on up, get an award. Oh, and by the way, nobody gave a big speech. Right. Uh, it, and most of, most, most of them, wait a minute, not last night. I'm talking about the original, earlier oh. Academy Awards, the first televised. Well, somebody's trying to call me. Screw that. Anyway, uh, 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 it, 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 the, um, uh, the first one that they did uh, was, uh, he, and so-and-so, the winner is, blah, blah, blah. And he goes, the, the guy comes, the person comes up on stage, grabs the Oscar, says, thanks, and then walks yeah. off. You know, nobody sat there giving these big long speeches, and and uh, you know Will Smith's acceptance speech last night literally was putting me to sleep because it was at such an hour that it would put anyone to sleep, even on the West Coast. Five minutes. I just, just wanted five minutes. I uh, wanted him to say Chris Rock's name at the end, just say, you know what, I, I apologize, or you know that was the wrong thing for me to do, Chris. Let's talk about it after the show. Something like that no he apologized to the academy but he never yeah. apologized to chris rock right exactly. Exactly. he was being a he was a vessel he was a vessel of love yes who otherwise known as a dick <laughs> <laughs> well, said, right? he was a vessel of love yeah. len it's like you can see into my bedroom <laughs> Very funny line there, Pammy, with your your fresh prints. Oh, I'm sure there's going to be plenty of that. But also, too, uh, he really um, I really thought Will Smith did a, a performance on those tears. I mean, come on. <laughs> he, they should have came out with an academy for that. Yeah. yeah, no yeah. yeah give him an extra I still I, I still think Chris Rock should have thanked Will, though. Because, I mean, Will just gave him 15 minutes in his next special. Like, that's a full 15-minute segment. Oh, yeah. <laughs> There's no question. Well, also, Chris Rock's career has been kind of iffy lately. You know, he's done some good stuff. I like the Fargo he did, uh, where he played a gangster. He's playing it's Madison Square Garden three nights or two, two oh, or three really? nights. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Really? Oh, yeah. Yeah. The only thing I, the divorce though his it like his special after the divorce and the things that he's chosen to do since then have been very interesting. Yeah. Well, the thing I didn't like about Chris Rock for all these years and I complained about is that he would go on stage and he would do the stuff about yeah. The funny thing about white people, you know, what white people do white people do this, white people do that, and I'm thinking to myself, now if I as a white person went up and did that about black people, I probably wouldn't even get out of the auditorium alive, you know. Mm. I mean, I, I found his his I found his humor to be based uh, in race, you know, on racist me, tomes, as it were, uh, and not on any solid comedy. Richard Pryor did that, too. Richard Pryor yeah. didn't do that. that Pryor and Murphy. But, but yeah. Pryor make, made fun of everybody, including his own people. You know, I think all I, these guys are really funny. <laughs> They're just really funny. Uh, no, I never found Rock that funny. You know, uh, I, think um, he's very funny. I think he's a good actor. I really I think, think he's turned funny. into a good actor, uh, and he should pursue that more. Uh, but uh, you know, Charlie, uh, it's, I know it's racist to ask a black person, <laughs> but um, what do you think about 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 um, uh, Chris Rock and and his? ability to make people laugh do you think he's funny oh he wasn't the funniest person in the world no but i thought he i i i like this comedy a little bit yeah okay all right you know i mean i just i i just never found him that funny but then again i'm, I'm a white guy 
I will admit that. And there's nothing I can do about it, although I'm Jewish. So. No, but I agree with you about the um, white people are this way. I never liked that part of it. So yeah. Yeah. I just felt that uh, what's good for the goose is good for the gander. It's a kind of, he would do, he did material about black, white people that I would never do about black people. Let me exactly, put it in yeah. You know, even when it was kind of allowed, you know, I never found making race jokes particularly funny. Um, Steve Bender, any thoughts? I don't think it's, ex I don't think it's a clear two way street. I understand exactly what you're saying, but mm -hmm. I think there is, you're dealing with a historical power mm -hmm inequality oh yeah that gives the the you know the black comic more of the right to see through that lens and play play on it to make fun of the person of the oppressor is different than making fun of the underdog well you know the academy the academy lately has been so get feeling so guilty about the way they've treated black people that i almost expect them next week to come out with an announcement that retroactively they're putting hattie mcdaniel in the front row well, could just start, they could just start calling it the Hatties instead of the Oscars. The Hatties instead of the Oscars. <laughs> you know, who was it that said uh, last night on the show? Uh, it was, a, a, I think, a, either a Mexican performance, performer, whoever, who said that the Oscar was designed after a Hispanic actor. Really? Muscular Hispanic actor. And he gave oh. the name, and I didn't know that. It's the Oscars. Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, uh, oh boy. Did you, did you watch it, like it last night? Uh, Mandy, Mandy, did you did you watch it by any chance last night? Uh, no, I was watching um something about Pam on Hulu. So, is that good? That's a great series. Yeah, it's, something about Pam. Her, she's really I just love her. So it's this Renee just, Zellweger. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what's it about? It's about a woman that murdered her best friend because she wanted her life insurance. You know, it's one of those Dateline stories that they basically made a movie out of. <laughs> and each, each person even narrates in the movie. Oh, really? Yeah. Hmm. But I, I kind of forgot about him, you know, and I just, I haven't, I'm like one of our other panelists. I haven't probably watched in 20 years. I could care less. I, yeah. I, well, I just I'm watching my guests so that I have something to talk about. You know, how many times did you wake me up last night? How many times did you <laughs> award? The, They're giving out best actor. They're giving no, out best actor. No, no, they, they she she wouldn't let me turn the TV set off, but she slept through the whole thing. <laughs> Every now and then I'd say, You want me to turn it off? I'm just gonna go in the other room and watch it. And she went, No, keep it on. Let me know mm -hmm. what's happening. <laughs> <laughs> you were actually snoring loudly at one point. I did right. not, and you woke me up at the important times. <laughs> what what important times? When so and so was announcing the best actress, the best actor, whatever. Do you know the worst part about the show? I predicted every winner. You know, there were no surprises, no surprises at all. I predicted the slap. You predicted, you predicted the, the best director. <laughs> Very funny, Alex. Pammy. Alex, Jeez, you predicted the best director else, going to what? Power of the Dog. Yeah. Did yeah. you predict that? No, I predicted okay. Coda. Okay. I, best director went I, to. I, in Power fact, of you the can dog. go back and listen to the latest thing I did with Michael Snyder. We do this, and I said I thought Coda would win. I said Will Smith will win for for best actor. Best actress will go to Renee Zellweger because we always give Oscars to anybody who imitates somebody. Not Renee think, Zellweger. It, but if you, you think about it, huh? Jessica, Jessica Chastain. Well, uh, Jessica Stain. Uh, Jessica Jess. Yeah, Jessica Chastain. Chastain. Yeah, but I mean, she, uh, look at Renee Zellweger. Didn't didn't she win an award for, for Beauty? She won for Beauty. For, for, uh, anytime somebody is there. Uh, doing a um, um, uh, impersonation, an impersonation, a, 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 a rich little, yeah. They, yeah, so, 
in an Academy Award. Either that or they have some kind of handicap. That also wins Academy Award. Right. Yes, Steve. What, Steve? No, I just think that's, that's just a, such a funny idea. It's, it's absolutely true. There was a whole thing with that movie, um, this, uh, the, where, the one where Robert Downey, Distant uh, Thunder. Oh, this oh, thunder, oh. Where, they, where they talk about winning these awards if you play you know a mentally impaired tropic yeah. thunder yes yeah. right yes. <laughs> you know, or if you have or if you have an accent you know it was, it was pretty easy to guess all these well, awards. i i i mentioned a few years ago and i can't go back and remember what the pictures were because i'm still taking this medicine that impairs my memory entirely uh, but I mentioned that the previous four years of Academy Awards for Best Actor and Best Actress were all won by people doing impressions of people. Hmm. Uh, uh, it was a media idiom in Dada, or it was Ray, or it was, you know, it was any number of films. And this was like four years in a row. So it makes so, you think, why, is, why isn't Rich Little considered like the greatest <laughs> actor of all time? <laughs> He never made a movie about any one of the people he does an impression of. Right, right. Uh, although he did do Carson in The Late Show. Uh, late Shift. On, yeah. Late Shift late on uh, in, uh, HBO. But I, uh, uh, it's just a given. And the other is, of course, a handicap. I mean, I knew that the deaf guy was going to win. Now, number one, he was very good in the film. So I'm not taking that away from him. But there were a lot of other performances that were pretty damn good, too. And I knew he was going to win because he did his whole thing deaf. He did it without speaking a line. Okay. <laughs> no. Hey, Alex, to pivot a little bit, speaking of Carson, uh, you hear about Joseph, Joseph Gordon-Levitt playing Carson in this uh, Johnny Carson limited series? Isn't he too short to play Carson? <laughs> I don't know. I think the camera can figure that out. I, I, I think it's a compelling choice. Is Carson tall? He's a little smarmy. Uh, who? A little smarmier than Carson, I think. Well, it, well, he's very smarmy on the thing about Uber. Have you seen the show he did on Showtime about Uber? No. Oh, no, but... I like it. It's really good. But he plays a I real like asshole. There. You watched one episode. That's enough. <laughs> I'm I'm intrigued about him playing Carson though. I think the way he throws himself into roles, he's a very talented guy, and to me, the face has a definitely has a quality where I might be able to believe it. I'm excited about that. Really? Uh, yeah. No. <laughs> I don't know. What What else are we even watching, dear? Did we watch anything else? It was we watched well, The Aviator again with Liam Hardy. Which is good. Yeah. We wouldn't have started watching it if we'd realized it was three hours long. <laughs> I started uh, watching that series that Zelensky did in Ukraine, Servant of the People. Yeah. How is it's it? It's actually pretty good. Yeah. Well, that's what I hear. Yeah. Uh, well, that, that's, I think, what got him elected. Yeah. You know, and, and what's interesting and, is they're talking about his government being so corrupt, and yet the series that he's, where he's pretend he's a history teacher who accidentally gets elected president and the first thing he starts doing is going after corruption well he, he his, his he, he's never been accused of being corrupt it was the it was the, well the russians think he thinks so oh yeah but it That's was why the, they invaded well, this country no, i think it, the nazis it, are in there too no the the um uh, um administrations earlier pre, prior to his were absolute thieves yeah, yeah, they were very corrupt. That's how he won the election. He won as an anti-corruption candidate, and supposedly he opened up the country to much transparency where that that is concerned. Why? Why was he? Um, I keep hearing that he was very unpopular before this war in in yeah, Ukraine. Well, he, he was why? unpopular because he he was doing things that he. <sighs> Supposedly, he wasn't that great a, 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 an administrator. I mean, he tried, he did away with oligarchs, okay, forgetting that they paid a lot of tax money, you know. So there were, there were certain things that were raising the, uh, the, uh, uh, the cost of living and so on and so forth, you know. Plus, he wasn't in a position, I mean, now he is considered one of the greatest leaders that ever led a country, but because he proved himself under fire. 
which is really? much more really? important than trying to justify every day why this price went up on something and why uh, you know this problem exists and everything gets blamed on you. He wasn't necessarily considered terrible, and they felt he probably could get reelected, but they didn't expect him to be this good. And I think that's what surprised everyone. Yeah, just he, seeing the guy, guy rise to an occasion like this yeah. is unbelievable. I mean, you know, it's so it's powerful. Like, He's so good. Like, like if it happened in our country, what do you think would happen here? If Say, just for the sake of argument, uh, we uh, elected a comedian for president. Say, Carrot did. Top. Carrot Top. We did. We elected uh, how do you think Carrot Top would do as a president? Better, <laughs> pretty, better than Donald Trump. Jacked. Better yeah. than Donald Trump. You know, <laughs> bedtime for Bonzo, kind of, you know. Huh? What, bedtime what? for Bonzo, wasn't that kind of? Uh, <laughs> that was Reagan's attempt at comedy. Well, Jared Top's but, pretty yeah. jacked. I think he would come at anybody who came at the States. Mm -hmm. I think he would bring the fists up. It, it, he'd go back into the audience and slug Will Smith. That's yeah, what exactly. Do. <laughs> but isn't that the deal though like there's there's a wartime president and then there's a peacetime president and it all depends on the the the, the culture around them or the climate around them as to if they rise or not well what happened last night could become a trend with the oscars and in that case um uh, probably uh mcmahon from the ww <laughs> should probably produce the next oscars I saw at least three fairly big name comedians tweeting today that they were genuinely a little bit afraid to go to their gigs. They're like, do I have to put on a catcher's mask to do a gig now? Because this is just going to normalize, you know, you talk to someone at a table or something and someone comes yeah. up and punches you in the face. Yeah. 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 Actually, you know, Can we just Will Smith wait, wait, wait. or Mark? something? <laughs> Mark. You're Mark. our pal Rick Overton. I want to know his opinion. How mm. his take on it? Oh, gee. Yeah. Yeah. Because Rick knew, knows, uh, pretty sure he probably knows uh, Mr. Rock, just maybe professionally. Mm -hmm. So Rick was not in New York at that point, I think. Yeah. But, uh, because, you know, working comedians, Alex, he's one of the top. Yeah, you know, we so. don't hear about comedians getting punched by people in the audience that oh, you get heckled, but you don't get punched. No, yeah. no. Not you, yet. Know, you know, you know how many times uh, Bobby Slayton ripped me a new one when I'd sit in the front of the row? <laughs> oh, oh, you know, man. The things he would say to me were unbelievable. <laughs> yeah. And they were yeah. funny. I laughed. What do I care? Yeah. I yeah. love the guy. I'd go back today. Like, yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, Bobby. Yeah, what would Bobby say about that? Can you this? imagine Will Smith at a at a roast? He goes across everybody's <laughs> face. <laughs> oh boy! I, I would imagine that uh, you know that Chris Rock is maybe going to be a little reticent from here on in to do the kind of thing he does in his act. Oh, I hope not. We're getting towards the end of the show, and I want to do something and ask people, Marjorie, don't you tell them what do you think this is? Hold it to closer to the camera, Alex. Okay, wait a minute. A little tiny uh, piece of cake. Oh, uh, looks like an artery. <laughs> looks like the face of Jupiter. Okay, wait a minute. I'll show you another one. What? what? Tiger eye? What, what is this? Okay. That's tiger eye. Those are candies. Ah, are candies? bingo. Ah, oh, wow. I, know my, I know my sugar. <laughs> any, any, any idea where from? C's. Mm hmm. C's or Another guess? Mask Brothers? Hmm. Bloomingdale's? Uh, tell them, Marjorie. Our friend who used to work for us went back to Poland and for our anniversary sent us a box of Polish cho uh, chocolates. Wow. Cool. Yeah. And they are good. Chocolate. Oh, are okay. they liquor filled? Uh, no, they're just, they're just, more, more. just chocolate filled. This is the most sugar oh. I've had in five years now. But. And they're still good. <laughs> By the way, I went today to my urologist. <laughs> well, there's a segue, Alex. He, uh, he gave me the chocolates after he stuck his finger up my butt. You know. I never got chocolates. <laughs> That's because he wasn't a urologist. Tammy, let me ask. You're not a comedian, are you? No, no. I'm a fan of yours, so see what happened to me? You're very funny. Yeah. Uh, 
you got to keep calling us on Mondays. You're very I've been funny. watching you guys for a long time incognito, well, but I always felt weird with a camera. <laughs> oh, hey, look who's here. With, oh. He'll have a, he does, without the cup on his eye. Oh, ladies right. and gentlemen, he made it at the last minute. All right. I tried. <laughs> Let me ask him this. Rick, what time was the appointment? Uh, 2.20. Oh, because if it were a dentist, you'd want to go and get an appointment for two thirty. Oh, <laughs> oh no. thank you, Alex. But two twenty, and and you said you didn't know how long it would be before you got to see him. How long did it take? Today, maybe twenty twenty five minutes. That always happens. Today, I waited a half hour for my urologist. Yeah. You know, and yeah, I was well, getting... last week, as I told you, it was 90 minutes. Today it was not as bad. Well, wait a minute. Pammy E says, honestly, I got into radio, Alex. You, you're in yeah, radio? Because I was. I used to listen to your show and you inspired me later in life. <laughs> and, and what were you, a disc jockey? Or That's where I started. And then I ended up in San Francisco. You know, they make you do it all kind of news here, sidekick there. Where? What the station stuff. were you at? I ended KGO with headlines, but um, the stations that I worked for kind of worked my way up and had to go to all the smaller markets, of course. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I was never like a headliner. I was always the sidekick. <laughs> yeah. So I, are you doing it anymore? Or? No, right now I'm in Sacramento. I decided to buy some property up here because it was COVID and all that good stuff. Oh, well, you should come and be my my sidekick on. on I will on, anytime, on. man. Are you kidding? I'm talking <laughs> about, I mean, I worked with a lot of people like you, John McClanagan, people like that, that were just kind of top 40 ish radio. Yeah. Um, very good people, though, and great. But uh, no, you were like my favorite. I only got a few rock jocks that that kept me on their show. But um, I just did it more for fun while I was on other stations being serious, doing well, headlines. Yeah, well, I was I was the best ever. Right. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I thought the only way I was ever going to get on your show was to become an obit. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Rick, so the, you, you wait. I see. I waited a half hour for my urologist to stick a finger up my ass, and you waited 20 minutes for somebody to poke his finger in your eye. So, more and, or less. Yes. So, uh, did they give you the, uh, the all clear? No. Hmm. No. No, the left eye is now 2025, so that's going well. Mm -hmm. The right eye still has a piece of cataract they didn't get last week. Oh, oh no. Good doctor, good doctor. So <laughs> I have to see him in 10 days. Hopefully that part will dissolve. If not, they might have to go back in. Oh, man. Yeah. I never heard of that. Maybe. And, and you got, tell them, you got the most expensive version of this thing. Well, he said sometimes a laser misses a piece. Well, I think a knife doesn't. <laughs> well, whatever. You're kind of giving it a funny look, Mark. You agree? Uh, all the technology that went into laser surgery? I'm thinking it should have zapped everything down to the molecule. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but the left eye is doing very well. The right <laughs> eye... <laughs> your, your doctor isn't Dr. Oz, is he? No, no, no Dr. Benny no, 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 no. Boombox. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Dr. Cyclops. Oh, well, I mean, it could be, could be. What's uh, who's our, who's, uh, who's your, uh, your senator, uh, Vernon, down there in? Kentucky. Oh, right, yeah, Mitch McConnell. Me, no, the other, no, one. the other one. Oh, Rand Paul. Rand yeah. Paul, isn't he an eye doctor? Yeah. He's yeah. an eye doctor. Yeah. yeah, who did your eyes, Rick? Rand Paul? <laughs> no. <laughs> He's one of the best in New York City. That's all I can say. Yeah. So we'll see but, what happens. But why is it everybody? I mean, and I, I, I believe that you believe he is the best in New York City. Okay. Just like I believe that my doctor is the best urologist in New York City. But really, everybody always says, my doctor, you know, I have a doctor and he's the best you know proctologist in the business and i don't know that there aren't a lot of best doctors you know okay you know you no. know my biggest problem today is i put the pails out 
and they keep blowing over. So that's why I'm 10 minutes later than I would have been because I was picking up all the garbage that was on my lawn to put oh, back in the pail. Is it windy out there? Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. And Boy, cold. The snow. The pride of home ownership, huh? Yeah. 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 I was picking up, you know, the aluminum and the pan and the bottle of vodka, empty bottle, you know, whatever. <laughs> yeah. This is the, uh, this is the kind of, uh, of uh, show that we do here, folks, on uh, on Mondays, where we talk about people's garbage, yes. <laughs> you know. And by the way, on the train, a lot of people were not wearing masks today. Really? Where I went, well, I went to my doctor's and everybody was wearing masks there. Oh, you can't go into my doctor office. Um, Lyft still won't take let you get in their cab unless you you're in their car unless you wear a mask. So that's all. How's it down in there, Mark? Us, anything medical, you have to wear a mask. Airports, you still have to wear a mask. Uh -huh. Everything else, it's like the Wild West. It's the yeah. Wild West. I, yeah. think, I think it'll be good if, if this is all over so the bank robbers can go back to wearing masks. And it, but it, and I could go back to dating. <laughs> did you see the guy? Did you see the black guy? He was like I can't remember. He's some famous person or something went into a bank, and he was of course wearing his mask. And then he said, "I I want I want to cash his ten thousand dollars, twelve thousand dollars, and I want it in cash." And he whispered to him, "says I want it in cash." <laughs> and, yeah, and they want everybody to go her here. She, they she called the police. Right. She went. Yeah, they called person. the police on well, the person. A couple of weeks later, earlier, a lot of people had a couple of people had been mugged for money when they came out of that bank. Yeah. Mm. So the reason he was whispering it was because, and she per pressed the bell on him, and then in come the cops, and they put it. You know, it, it it's. Uh, masks identified robbers i just think that's where it's very important and now we don't know who the robber is anymore yeah anyway you know you, you can go into cvs and steal toilet paper no one's gonna care you know and, bye uh, have a yes, nice time yes vernon one last thing here before we run out of time did anybody see the statistic about uh, the number of murders per capita in the top 10 states and eight of them are red. Yeah. Really? And Kentucky is number three. In the number of murders per capita, right? The number of murders per capita. Right. All across the South. They even put Georgia down as a blue state. But if I'm not mistaken, Georgia has a Republican legislature yeah. and a Republican yeah. governor. Well, we have two Democratic senators there. So I guess that makes them, quote, blue. Yeah, mm. but they're not the ones creating the laws in Georgia. Nope. Right. Right. Hey, listen. But I thought that was interesting. Thank Kentucky's you. Number three. Yay. That's, that's about that's about as political as this show ever gets. Mm. Uh, hey, listen, Marjorie, you haven't said anything today for the most part. I did. Oh, you did. Okay. Well, you said I didn't fall asleep. <laughs> True. Uh, 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 Mike Chisholm, up there in Canada. Peace and love, everybody. Peace and love. Uh, Steve Bender, thank you. Charlie Wallace, always a pleasure, Charlie, when you can get here. Len LaFrisco, I'd know you and your wallpaper anywhere. <laughs> uh, and uh, Mandy, who's been a little quiet today, but she's been working hard, right? It's nuts. It really it is, huh? Yeah, it's that time of year, Marjorie knows. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Mar Marjorie, isn't that a really nice uh, uh, blouse or whatever that is she's wearing? What is that, a blouse or what is it? Are you talking to me? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, it's it's a blouse. It's, yeah, like yeah. A, it's very nice. Blouse. You like that, Marjorie? I mean, you're stylish. Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, Vernon Nunn in Kentucky, thank you. Mark, always wonderful to see you here. I, I When I see your shining face, it makes me feel good rick i'll be calling you in a couple of minutes uh and uh uh pammy hey call more you're funny you're really funny and finally i've been watching you for a long time i love it yeah so i've been watching me for a long time too. <laughs> i still look as young as ever don't i 
anyone. I, I don't care. Alex Bennett will always be Alex Bennett. You could do anything. You can't do anything wrong in my book, okay? Okay. <laughs> that's that's see, do you see that, folks? I used to be a big shot. Huh? Huh? <laughs> Who else could do morning yeah. obits? And it was okay. We laughed so hard. It was so disgusting and funny. I had, well, I, it's a long story, but I almost had a Chris Rock happen to me one day because of those obits. Really? You, you I was, were oh, the I was, at, I was at some kind of event, and this woman comes up to me with crazy eyes. You know, what I'm, I'm talking about when I say crazy eyes, <laughs> you know, uh, and, and she said, you made fun of my father in the obituaries. And I just I'm, I'm looking around and and I'm I see my 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 general manager and a whole bunch of people they're looking at this going on and I'm going come over and help me will you? And they thought she was a big fan of mine, but she was she could have pulled out a knife. She was so mad, you know. Well, the work up to it I think was part of it. Here's who kicked the can, bought the farm. <laughs> yeah, 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 right. <laughs> you were so crass. It was great. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> Well, I did after that, I learned that you never do the obituaries from the actual obituaries. You do the obituaries of famous people and you don't pay. Yeah. You don't go and say, and little Marty S Smith out in Palo Alto is dead today. <laughs> <laughs> she died at I, know, I didn't I didn't know they were real obits. All I could think of was if yeah, they are. She, she died at 102. Oh, that must have been a sweet smelling corpse. You know. No. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Hey, listen, we're running way over. Thank you, everybody, for being here. And finally, Edward Berger will sign us off by saying, "What well, your mic oh. isn't on. Uh, turn your mic on. Do you have your mic on, Edward? It is on. Huh? Well, now we lost it. Now you, you don't. Wait a minute. Edward, Edward, turn. No, no, no. I get what's going on here. This is his tribute no. to the heart of hearing. No. There's a problem. Even with your mic. <laughs> With, with your mic on, Edward, with your mic on, we're not he here. He needs to learn how to sign it. So just yeah. move your mouth and I'll do your voice, okay? Okay. <laughs> Thank you all, folks. <laughs> Everybody wave goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>